Woodward guy here today, and today we're doing another impression video. Uh, this time, it, as you can see, it's a World War II German soldier. I haven't done one in a few years, so I decided why not do one, have a little update on it. So for this impression, I'm doing a late war impression, uh, more specifically a few days or weeks after the D-Day invasion. Uh, so it's going to be you know, uh, Northern France, you know, Normandy uh, campaign and all that. And uh, that's my impression for a regular infantry soldier, you know, part of the, the Heer, not the SS, not the Luftwaffe, nothing like that, just regular army. So that's my impression. We're going to do a turnaround. We're going to do a close-up. We're going to do all that fun stuff. And that'll be the video. So let's do the turnaround. All right, let's see what I'm wearing closer. All right, everybody. Now we're doing the close-up portion of the video. And before we go in it, um, for some reason, whenever I try to put the German impression on the mannequin, it becomes very difficult to get anything on there. So when I go around, you may notice some things look wonky or not fitting properly or things out of place. Um, that's just because on the mannequin, it's a bit more difficult to set it on. But as you can see, when I'm wearing it, it's much more correct. Well, that being said, let's go right into it. All right, so to begin with the helmet, on this one, I decided to have an M40. Uh, this one would have a single decal. So for the, um, you know, uh, Battle of Normandy and all that, you know, and, and Northern France and everything, you would still see soldiers with M40s and you'd also see them uh, with uh, single decals. Uh, was it the norm? Probably not, but it was still seen um, quite a bit. So that's why I decided to have the M40 with decal. For another helmet, you could also have the M42, as you can see there, and you could easily have a uh, chicken wire on there with some foliage. Um, so you could easily see both, you know, of course, with maybe a bread bag strap. Uh, of course, we all know about the Normandy camo that was painted on there. But yeah, so these are two different uh, variety of helmets that you could have seen during that battle, during that time period. Uh, going on, let's do the uniform first. Uh, on this one, I have an M40 uh, field blusa or tunic, if you want to say. Uh, so the M40, you know, came out around 1940. Uh, again, these were also seen in Normandy. Uh, northern France uh, you can see you know m40s m42s m43s m possibly some n36s uh, just less common uh, so I have the m40 with a bevo uh, eagle on there Uh, this one was made by, I think, Epic Mill. No, it's uh, by Sturm. And one of the problems is the button buttons are more spaced out. So the last one is with the pocket instead of right on top of it. So it's not the best uniform, but you know, it's still accurate as long as you put in the work with it. Uh, for headgear, I decided to use the M... What was it, the M40? The M40 uh, Feldmütze. Uh, this one probably not very common around 1944 you'd mostly see the m42 or the m43 uh, but it was still seen one reason why i decided to use this one is because on my m43 is not as accurate um just some smaller details but this is a bit more accurate um as it is uh why do i set it here like i said because of the mannequin it's difficult um i just put it here so it's easier access so i can show it off to you normally you'd have it in your your tunic pocket, or maybe, not very commonly, but maybe you could see it tucked in the belt, but mostly in the pocket. All right, going down, for the pants, I have M43 uh, Kilhosen. Uh, you could see these in Normandy. You could also see the M40, which is, you know, these, but they don't have the ties at the end. They're just straight pants. Um, I have these mostly because these are the M36, the M36, you know, stone gray, not as accurate as the M43. Uh, so that's what I have. You could also have the M40, like I said. Now, one second, if I can change this real quick. All right. Uh, for the footwear, I decided to put the low boots. Uh, you can actually still see some jack boots being used by this time. You can see just about an equal amount of both. Uh, but for this, I decided to do the low boots. 
these are old run at the fronts. These were the bad ones that, you know, broke on everybody. Uh, mine are kind of breaking underneath, but, you know, I dyed them black, put on some leather uh, laces. And then on them, I have uh, gamashin, which I put this one on incorrectly. Normally, it would look like this. It'd be more to the side. <laughs> All right, normally, these would be on the side. You get the idea. Uh, you have gamashin. These are the cheaper at the front ones, which are not very good. Uh, for socks, I would just have the regular army issue socks. If you guys can see that. I would have that. So that's what I would have for the footwear. As you can see, it also has hobnails. Um, underneath, I forgot to mention, underneath I have a tropical shirt. These were seen just not very common. Normally you'd see the gray knit or the gray cotton shirts, um, but to be a little different, a little unique, I put a tropical shirt on there. And then underneath that, normally you'd have some sort of sports shirt with was like, you know, just a tank top. All right, for the... Oh, and yes, I also uh, gave myself a wounded badge in black. So it's, if you get wounded about one or two times, you get the black. More than that, it's silver and then gold and so on. But for that, I have black, you know, simple thing. And there you go. All right, for the equipment, uh, for the belt buckle, I decided to have a steel belt buckle uh, painted in, you know, field green. Uh, you can also see the aluminum ones as well. It was a bit of a variety of both. Um, for this, I just decided to do steel. For the belt, I just have a leather belt. This is the one that I made myself. Um, you know, gotta show it off. But yeah, I have a video on that if you wanna check it out. All right, going this way. Um, on each side, I have two K98 ammo pouches. These ones are made by Kokomomo on eBay. And of course, inside, I named them. There you go, you can't take them now, they're mine. <laughs> All right, moving along. We have the field equipment. So here we have a, uh, a spade or a shovel with the shovel carrier. Now, this one's a leather shovel cover. I wanted to have the pressed off one, but the shovel that I have, which is a Swiss one, uh, couldn't fit in it. So this is the pressed off uh, shovel cover. These are more accurate because pressed off was much more common than leather, especially by 1944. Uh, but like I said, the Swiss one, which is more accurate than my East German one, can't fit in that. So I have the leather one on for the display. Uh, on that, I have a leather uh, bayonet frog made by At The Front. I don't recommend it. It's not very good quality. Uh, so check out Vincent. Uh, oh, forgot his name. I'll post a link in the description. But check out Vincent. He has much better pressed off and leather items. Uh, on it, I have a an original 1939 uh, bayonet. If you check one of my monthly update videos, you guys can see a bit more on that. But uh, matching serial numbers and everything, dated 1939. Very cool. And then on the back, uh, I have my bread bag. As you can see, it's right there, my bread bag. Um, inside, I have, you know, personal items, food, uh, anything else that I would really need. And then on the right side, I'd have my canteen. Uh, your standard canteen with what a Bakelite cup, a smaller one. Then I would also have my mess kit on the side. Inside you could also put, you know, maybe more valuable things that could easily break or of course extra food, anything else you could easily store in there. Then on top of that, I also have my Zetban. You can see this quite a bit in Normandy. Um, a lot of them are wearing it on the back like this or some of them even wear it as a extra camouflage of course you know it's very heavy it's very hot so maybe not as common and then on top of that I have my gas mask canister uh, this one's an original refurbished one by at the front inside I have my gas mask and then underneath that my filter and then also I have the spare lenses in here uh, I do I am missing the the cloth the retaining retaining spr spring um, and one of the two decontamination kits that you'd often see in there. And then on my back, normally by 1944, you'd see a lot of Germans uh, strapping this to the canister itself. Um, just for the video, I decided to just put it on the back, but understand that it would be more common to have it strapped on the canister. Um, this is the gas sheet bag with the gas sheet inside, as you can see there. Also still seen by this time of the war. And then that would be about it.
Now, of course, you know, every German soldier will have personal items in their pockets and their tunic pockets. And I am actually going to do a close up video on the personal items that I personally keep um, on myself. So we'll look inside my bread bag and we'll also look in the tunic pockets. So with that being said, Let's go All check right, it out. So that was the close up portion of the video. I know I said I was going to show you my personal items in this video, but I decided to have that as a completely different video. Uh, so for that, we're going to conclude today's impression. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to do a quick turnaround and that'll be it. All right, so that's the video, late 1944 or mid-1944, late World War II, German hair impression. I hope you liked it. If you did, drop a like, write a comment. If I can improve on anything, that would greatly be appreciated. Um, share the video, subscribe, but besides that, you guys have a great day.